Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. We'll get right to it. Mr. Prime Minister, one of your big promises during the election campaign was infrastructure spending. This included money for transit here in Vancouver. Uh, but with your government now facing a deficit in the tens of billions of dollars, oil prices are in the basement, worries over the world economic economy. How can you make good on that now? Well, the fact is that we saw the challenges coming in the economy. For 10 years, we've had uh, less than optimal growth for, uh, for Canadians, for Canadian families. And we made a commitment to actually uh, invest in our communities because that's how you create growth. So uh, the downturn in the economy uh, means it's even more important for us uh, to invest in infrastructure, to lower taxes for the middle class, to give more generous uh, child benefits to the families who need it uh, by not giving them to the family who do, families who don't. Uh, these kinds of things is what's going to put us on the path to creating the growth that Canadians need. One of the uh, infrastructure issues that has dominated discussion is, of course, pipelines. Um, that is one of the key components, I believe, uh, to getting the economy rolling, pundits have said. Now, just this morning, Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall tweeted, uh, some in Canada say carbon taxes in the West would gain support for pipelines across the country. How is that working? And he is, of course, referring to Quebec's decision uh, regarding Energy East. So how do you reconcile such different perspectives when it comes to issues like well, pipelines? The job of the Prime Minister is to, to, to bring people together and to make sure that to the entire country is uh, leaning on each other and supporting each other through difficult things. Uh, one of those jobs uh, of the Prime Minister is to get our resources to market in responsible and sustainable ways. And the way to do that is to make sure you're building public trust and public involvement. And for 10 years, we have a government that uh, hasn't done a very good job of that uh, and therefore there was a, a massive amount of opposition and concern around pipelines uh, we need to create an opportunity to to give uh, the public license necessary and that means working with uh, premiers uh, with very different views right across the country uh, so that we can grow our economy in smart sustainable ways for the long term on that note, you are in town, of course, as we mentioned, for the first minister's meeting. So, as we know, Alberta is seeing major job losses. Saskatchewan as well is feeling it. B.C. seems to be faring relatively well. We know that. So how do you balance the needs of individual provinces? Do current conditions uh, determine priority or is there more long-term planning? Well who we are as a country is is uh, uh, we're we're people who help each other out in times of difficulty. You know, the Alberta and Saskatchewan economy have been doing well uh, over the past while when uh, oil prices were high. Now that they've dropped, they're facing a real shock in terms of increased unemployment and challenges. Uh, and we're there for each other as a country. So uh, any prime minister needs to, to to balance the ways to best help uh, different regions of the country while making sure that there's growth and opportunities for everyone. Everyone. And that's where diversifying the economy, investing in infrastructure, investing in innovation and growth, and looking at, for example, the challenge of climate change, uh, yes, as a challenge, but also as an opportunity to uh, create clean technologies and renewable energies and the kinds of jobs we need in the future. You just spoke about uh, helping people out. Uh Obviously, Canada now met its goal of taking in 25,000 Syrian refugees, so not just helping our own citizens, but helping others. The issue, many of them still being housed in less than ideal conditions, many agencies saying they uh, don't have the resources necessarily to deal with this influx. Did we move too fast? Uh, I, I think one of the things that we have to recognize is is that Canadians have been extraordinary on this. The number of people who've opened up their homes, uh, who've uh, created opportunities in their communities to welcome in these people who are not refugees, are not immigrants, are now permanent residents, uh, is a huge recognition of what makes Canada strong. We have welcomed in successive waves of immigration uh, in uh, fleeing difficult times that has contributed to the extraordinary success of this country whether it was Vietnamese boat people or the Ismaili Muslims from uh, from East Africa. Uh, yes, there are always challenges in this, but for me, we're staying focused on the fact that the goal over the long term, uh, over the next five years, over the next 10 years, over the next generation, is that uh, these people be as successful as they possibly can. And getting it right from the beginning uh, is a really important part of that that we're working on. So what's next for Canada in terms of the refugees, not just the ones who are already here, but uh, for the crisis still happening in Syria? Well, uh, 
Canada has uh, put in place a, a very strong whole of government plan to engage uh, in uh, the Middle East uh, with more training, more humanitarian support, more uh, development assistance, more refugee support, uh, because we know that there is a need, a, there, we need a multi-leveled, multi-pronged approach uh, to stabilizing the region. Uh, there's more we can do here at home. We'll be accepting more refugees, but there's also uh, a lot more we'll be doing around uh, engaging with the world uh, in positive ways, because we're talking about 60 million uh, displaced people around the world right now, and that uh, number is only going to start going up uh, over the coming years. So Canada has a level of expertise uh, and ability uh, to help not just by taking in a few people ourselves, which we will, uh, but by helping other communities and societies around the world uh, better deal with an influx of displaced peoples. Now, as we are dealing with our own economic issues here at home, how do you prioritize whether you deal with uh, problems right here in our own backyard versus uh, more international issues? Well, uh, the, the one one of the issues that I can put forward as, as an example that we've worked very, very hard with is our relationship with the United States, uh, which is both a very domestic issue and an international issue. And and uh, the fact is uh, making sure that we have uh, smooth, uh, smooth border relations, uh, strong econ economic and, and uh, cultural and social ties and a good working relationship to deal with uh, the issues that come up, whether it's softwood lumber or uh, border access or investments. These are the things that uh, lead directly to better jobs for Canadians, a better, uh, better outcomes, better growth for our businesses. So working on the relationship with the United States as we've been doing hard and as we're going to continue to do with our big uh, uh, meeting in a couple of weeks, uh, these are the things that matter. On the issue of uh, pot legalization, that was, of course, another a promise key to your campaign. People are still being arrested for possession. So how do you answer to critics who claim this process is simply taking too long on the federal level? I mean, municipal politicians, uh, provincial politicians here in B.C. certainly have been uh, quite quite uh, upfront about their uh, thoughts on that with well, you. Well, the, the, the laws haven't changed yet. Uh, it, pot is still illegal in this country and will be until uh, we bring in a, a strong regulatory framework to legalize control and and uh, and make sure that we're keeping it out of the hands of kids uh, and make sure that we're keeping it uh, from uh, generating tremendous profits for uh, for uh, uh, for criminal organizations street gangs and gun runners I mean that's why we committed to legalizing and regulating uh, so that we are better able to protect uh, minors from the easy access to marijuana they have right now and better able to uh, keep crime uh, from profiting from uh, from uh, from the marijuana industry uh, that's our focus and that's what we're going to get right uh, and that's oh, that's what is necessary and we've seen from jurisdictions around the world that have done this uh, in different ways there have been successes and uh, failures and one of the things that we know we need to do is get it right from the very beginning and that's exactly what we're going to do well, what would you tell someone who's whose child or well teenager presumably uh, has been uh, slapped with some type of, of, of charge related to marijuana when it won't be illegal much longer. I mean, could there not be a period of decriminalization as one of your uh, federal counterparts proposed back during the election campaign? No, I think decriminalization is is a bad idea because it doesn't do anything to make it more difficult for young people to access it, and it doesn't do anything uh, in terms of uh, keeping the black market and the, and the criminal organizations from profiting from it. I believe in a, a, a control and regulation that actually will uh, do the protection of public safety and, and of minors that we need. Uh, and in, in the meantime, uh, it's still illegal. Let's shift gears a bit. Looking at the global perception of Canada, obviously that was a huge thing that changed once you took office. Where is there still work to be done on that front as far as how Canada is viewed on the world stage? Uh, well, the, the, we've successfully got people to take pay attention to Canada, and now uh, the next step is uh, ensuring that that leads to more investment in Canada, greater prosperity, more trade deals that aren't just signed, but then acted on and engaged with. And we have uh, uh, we have a lot of work still to do on that. But the focus on the international stage is always creating opportunities for Canadians, creating opportunities for growth that's going to help the most vulnerable populations contribute to uh, the global economy in positive ways.
ways. We need to engage it with the world in a way that's going to create good jobs and positive outcomes for Canadian consumers and Canadian workers. Uh, and that's the lens that I put on uh, international engagement. 8.23 at News 11.30. You are listening to a live exclusive interview with Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Uh, sir, a couple of minutes ago you referenced our relationship with uh, our American cousins. Obviously it's a big day stateside today with Super Tuesday. The Washington Post has dubbed you the anti-Trump. How do you maintain that relationship should things change uh, in terms of the political landscape stateside? Oh, the fact of the matter is I uh, I look forward to working with whoever gets uh, elected as president. I think uh, there have been times where uh, the president and prime minister have been perhaps uh, misaligned uh, on an ideological or a political spectrum uh, level uh, where we've been able to work very, very well together. And we have to remember that uh, uh, ideology can't drive our relationship. It has to be pragmatic, focused, focused on the things uh, where we do agree and making sure that we're creating jobs and opportunities for Canadians, so uh, I, I will work with whoever gets elected. <laughs> Even if he doesn't want to work with you? Uh, I think uh, it, understanding the way the American economy works and how much it is uh, intertied with the Canadian economy means that uh, any American president uh, has a tremendous number of issues that they have to uh, get right with Canada. And all I'm, what I've said uh, across my, uh, my political career is that I'm willing to uh, engage and work constructively on issues that, uh, that we find uh, of mutual importance and uh, agree to disagree on things we don't, uh, don't agree on. But having a positive working relationship with uh, uh, whoever ends up president is going to be really important, not just for me, but for the Canadian economy. On a bit more of a personal note, you've had a few months to settle into this to, into this job. What's been the most challenging part for you on a personal level? Uh, time management. Uh, there is uh, so much to do, and being able to do it all while still remaining uh, an active and present dad uh, and husband is uh, is the balance I need. But it really. Uh, it, it helps to remember uh, that I'm not doing this job in spite of the fact that I have a young family. I'm doing it because I have a young family, because I know that the things that we're going to be able to do uh, for this country, for Canadians, uh, is going to lead to a better future for, for them and for everyone. As we mentioned, you're here for the First Minister's Conference. What's your primary goal? Is there anything tangible you hope will come out of these meetings? Well, I think it's extremely important that we demonstrate uh, you know, real uh, movement on uh, creating a country in which we see uh, the challenges of climate change as an opportunity for growth, for investment, for uh, shifting the way uh, we work in effective ways uh, to be greener and, and, and more environmentally responsible. We have to play our role in the... Uh, global fight against climate change in meaningful ways uh, and the way that's done is by proper coordination uh, and collaboration uh, across not just uh, provincial uh, uh, leadership uh, but with municipal leaders I mean cities have taken great lead on on uh, on climate change actions and also on national Aboriginal organizations who uh, have a tremendous amount to contribute to the discussion around uh, how we're going to create a, a stronger and cleaner economy how do you keep everyone happy when you do have such a diverse group of, of politicians all with with different priorities. You remember that you're all serving the same Canadians, uh, that uh, people across the country know that you can't make a choice anymore between what's good for the economy and what's good for the environment. Uh, people understand we have to do those two together in smart ways. If we're going to create the kind of prosperity and the kind of uh, you know, protected uh, land that, uh, and, and healthy environment that we, uh, that we need in the future. And that, uh, that means uh, remembering uh, beyond the political positioning that various people have. Uh, Canadians need uh, collaboration, leadership, and real action, and that's exactly what we're going to give. Your leadership style is quite a contrast to the previous uh, government. So how do you think that has changed relations with the provinces? Well, I think the fact that we now have relations with the provinces is uh, is a good thing. Uh, we uh, gathered together a First Minister's Conference uh, back in December in Ottawa that uh, uh, showed a, a marked uh, positive engagement where, not where suddenly we all agree on everything and everything's tulips and roses, uh, but very much that we are now uh, 
open lines of communications. We're now talking regularly when there's issues that come up where uh, we don't see eye to eye. We talk it through. We figure out if there's a way that we can uh, find common ground and agreement. That's the way this country is supposed to work. We have such incredible diversity, geographic and backgrounds and perspectives right across this country that we have to be able to talk with each other, engage and understand that we're all trying to build the same kinds of things with different paths to getting it. And, and the prime minister's job is really to pull that together in, a, in an overarching sense of what it means to be successful in Canada. Now, we may be very diverse and very different, but we do share one common concern these days, sir. What do you plan to do about the fact there are no Canadian NHL teams poised to make the playoffs? Yes, uh, my Habs are, are breaking my heart this year. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a it's a challenge, but uh, it's one that I know that we are going to rise to uh, uh, all of us collectively to uh, to uh, to turn around in the coming years. Prime Minister, thank you for joining us. It's always a pleasure. All right, that's Prime Minister Justin Trudeau joining us live in studio.